In this section, you must provide a rationale for your project, identifying objectives, issues and needs of the project you will address. Outline how these needs and objectives were established. For example, if it was done through research and planning meetings. Where possible, youth exchange projects should demonstrate how young people were and will be involved in shaping the project. You should also show a clear link with the priorities and objectives of Key Action 1 Youth. Further information can be found in the 2018 Program Guide or in the 2018 Guide for Applicants. You should detail how the partnership was formed and its contribution in terms of skills and experience the partners have that are relevant to the project. Outline how this project links to the needs and objectives of the partners. At the bottom, you must select the most relevant topics from the options given. It is a drop-down list and you can choose up to three topics. Therefore, if your project expects to address more than three topics, please choose the three most relevant ones. As soon as you choose your topics from the drop-down list, they are all added underneath the question. Let's move down to Participants. This section looks at participants' profile, participants with fewer opportunities, and their learning outcomes. Here, you must describe who your participants are and provide details on their background and learning needs. Identify what learning outcomes of your project are and if you are involving any participants with fewer opportunities. You can find a detailed definition of participants with fewer opportunities in the 2018 program guide. The participants profile may vary depending on the activity you are applying for. Therefore, make sure you refer to the guidance for each relevant activity. In this section, you must describe the participants' actual or likely age ranges, gender and ethnicity, indicate how you will ensure a gender balance or provide any other pertinent information. You should also detail the recruitment and selection process from all partner groups in as much detail as you can and how you will ensure a fair and transparent process. Participants must be residents in the country of their sending or receiving organizations. You must state if your project involves participants with fewer opportunities. If you select yes, identify the types of situations from a drop-down list and enter the actual or likely profile of participants up to a maximum of seven. The situations you selected are added underneath the question. Below, you must state what means you're putting in place to cater for their specific needs. For more detailed guidance on each category, please refer to page 10 of the 2018 Program Guide in the Equality and Inclusion section. You should outline the competences or learning outcomes participants will acquire through participation and identify the competences that specific activities and methods will develop. There should be a clear link between the aims of your project, the activities and the learning outcomes. They should be relevant to your participants' needs and address these specific needs. Erasmus Plus promotes the use of European tools and certificates, such as YouthPass, which is the most commonly used European recognition tool for non-formal and informal learning in youth work. You must state if you will use any other competence validation certificates, and if so, which ones. Lastly, you must explain how you will use these. So, over here, from a drop-down list, you can choose Youth Parts. If you have any other instruments, just click Yes and clearly identify them. If you don't have any other instruments, click No and carry on with other questions. Preparation. When completing this section, please refer to the information provided in the award criteria for the specific key action in the 2018 program guide. In the practical arrangements section, you must detail how practical and logistical arrangements will be addressed, including but not limited to travel, accommodation, insurance, safety and protection of participants, visas, social security considerations, mentoring and support, and preparatory meetings with partners. If your project involves minors, that is participants under the age of 18, it is particularly important that you provide information on how you will ensure their safeguarding and welfare. So, this section should detail how and when you plan to deliver these practical aspects, which partners or individuals will manage these partner responsibilities, and how you will work together to manage practical arrangements, communication channels, any potential risks, and your plans for mitigating these risks to ensure safety of all those involved. 
This should include agreements on emergency procedures and a code of behavior for participants. In addition, include your plans for obtaining suitable insurance and managing any additional visa requirements and legal aspects. You are expected to comply with relevant national legislation in the hosting country and countries of each partner. Detailed information about this is included in the program guide. As a minimum, appropriate insurance should cover travel, damage or loss of baggage, third-party liability, accident and serious illness or death. If participants have specific needs, demonstrate how they will be addressed. Further down in the project management section, you should focus on the process you have established for agreeing roles and responsibilities with partners in order to ensure quality learning outcomes as well as good administration and delivery. The process for establishing suitable methods and agreeing and monitoring learning outcomes for participants. Ensure you detail how you intend to facilitate their active involvement and reflection to ensure the relevance and quality of these outcomes. The preparation of participants section should describe the training plan for participants and group leaders as it is necessary for the success of the project. This should detail the training to be provided, when and by whom. This must not only cover tasks-based training to ensure participant safety and ability to engage in activities, but also provide adequate support for intercultural and linguistic learning. Identify which partners will implement preparatory activities and when they will take place. Provide information about language and cultural preparation, practical orientation and risk prevention.